Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are checking out Bolt Action's Martyr 3 German tank. I'm going to be assembling it and I'm going to be discussing what I think uh, you might want to consider when you're assembling it yourself and any problems that I may have come across. And during the video, I'm going to be talking about the Martyr 3 and what kind of role it played in World War II. <laughs> But before the video begins, I want to make a special thank you to the patrons and YouTube members that support this channel. I very much appreciate your help. Thank you very much. If anyone would like to also help this channel keep going, then please consider looking at the stuff in the description below to do so. So this kit is a replica of the Martyr 3 SD KFC 139 tank destroyer from World War II. Germany. Now, in World War II, there were two other Martyr 3 tank destroyer variants produced. The Martyr 3 Ausrang H and the Martyr 3 Ausrang M with SDKFC designated 138. And this kit only makes the Martyr 3 SDKFC 139, even though for some reason the card says Martyr 3 Ausrang H. The picture is of the Martyr 3 SDKFC 139 variant, uh, so I'm presuming that the rules are too. Bold Action apparently doesn't make the Althorong H anymore. Anyway, it does make the Althorong M as a separate kit that you can buy. Not certain why they don't make the H anymore. Maybe they didn't feel a need to keep making both the H and the M, or maybe everyone was just choosing the M over the H because it's the better tank. I'm not sure. But anyway, this kit is the Martyr 3 SDKFC 139. It has the modified chassis of a Panzer 38T with a modified Soviet 76.2 millimeter field gun. The Germans called the 7.62 centimeter Pac 36R once they modified the Soviet gun to use the Pac 40 cartridges. The gun was simply bolted to the chassis with an extended gun shield added for a small amount of protection for the three members of the crew. There is also a 7.92 millimeter hull mounted machine gun. The Germans had wanted to put the German Pac-47.5 centimeter anti-tank gun on the Panzer 38T chassis, which is what they do do for the later Martyr 3 variants. But at the time when they first created this Martyr program, there weren't enough Pac-40 guns to spare uh, and they already had so many captured Soviet field guns that they used what they had for the time being. So the Martyr 3 is a plastic model kit. That means that the tools I'll be using for this assembly are sprue cutters, which are thin at the top to get into the small crevices of the sprue for precision cutting of the model pieces off their sprue, a hobby knife, which is not the same as an X-Acto knife. Please don't use an X-Acto knife for this. A hobby knife has a thin scalpel of a blade that in steady hands will clean off excess plastic from where the plastic piece was attached to the sprue. The back side of the knife can also be used to shave off curves so that you aren't accidentally cutting off too much plastic when you're trying to clean up the piece. You could also use a file or mold line remover for this task if you're a bit worried about how the hobby knife might be used. Just remember not to breathe in the plastic fibers coming off when using a file. And a small note on this particular replica, I found that there was some flashing on some of the pieces, really just on these track pieces where it's extra bit of plastic that wasn't actually meant to be part of the kit. So if you find that yourself, if there's a piece of very thin plastic on your model that does not seem to match uh, anything else. It might just be a little bit of flash, which is extra plastic that you want to cut off. So just bear that in mind. For me, the hobby knife is fast and simple to use. I've just used it for so long, but only ever use it to shave down something a millimeter or less in thickness. If you left more than that of the sprue on the piece you're trying to clean up, it's better just to use your sprue cutters to cut that down further and then go ahead and use the knife. So sprue cutters, a hobby knife, a pair of tweezers to handle the very small pieces, which there are numerous ones in this case, and extra thin plastic cement. In bolt action, you'll find plastic 
model kits, resin model kits, and pewter model kits, and sometimes a combination of the above. So having plastic putty to fill gaps and super glue to attach resin and pewter model pieces together will be inevitable in your bolt action journey. But for plastic models, I prefer to use plastic cement, also simply called plastic glue, particularly extra thin plastic cement with a fine brush applicator or a needle nose applicator like the Tamiya Extra Thin Plastic Cement that I'm using in this video as a fine brush applicator. You certainly can use super glue for this task, but I do find extra thin plastic glue a far better tool to use because it's not going to stick to your fingers. It dries quite quickly, so you don't have to pause between gluing pieces. And if something doesn't perfectly fit together, you can apply thin layers of the glue to that faulty connection point as you're gluing your model together and it will seal pieces together better without having to wait till everything glues and then going back with plastic putty which you can do, but I just prefer plastic glue for this reason. There is a thicker form of plastic glue that isn't exactly a fluid and more of a gel. That is ideal for bigger pieces of plastic, but I wouldn't suggest using it for a model of this size because it would be too easy to use too much, which would take longer to dry. You're more likely to accidentally add fingerprints into the glue as it's drying and a mess is more likely to be made. Now, right here, I am putting the turret to the chassis and there is a section that you don't want to glue basically so you can keep rotating your turret a little I don't really see that much of a need to worry about that but I know that this replica it doesn't particularly like to rotate that much if you did want to allow it to rotate a little better I think you need to shave these areas down just so you're not having any of the pieces that try to rotate connecting with any of the pieces that want to stay together. Now for this replica, I found that the majority of the pieces of this kit fit very well together. Though I did find myself squinting often at this black and white sketch assembly guide, wishing that it was a little more clear where each piece went on in more than one occasion. Hopefully seeing how I put this together will help you put it together yourself. Not that most of it isn't completely clear where it goes, but I don't know. It's just the black and white picture just makes it hard for me to see. Maybe it's just me. I hope it's just me. I really want to zoom in really closely, put my face to the guide to go, what am I looking at? But, but thankfully this is a vehicle that you could look up online and you could get a very good idea of where everything goes since this replica matches it quite closely. So there is always that. <laughs> I do want to note that the very small wheels for orienting the gun do not fit well onto the model. The pegs on my wheels were too short and I had to shave down the length of plastic they attach to so I could get a better connection. I tried to show it here, but I think I was a little bit too focused and you can't really see it, but believe me, I cut down the pegs to fit the wheels on more appropriately. And I added extra glue to the wheels as they were trying to really firm up the bond for them since uh, such small things like that don't necessarily hold on that well at first, but you should be fine. Also, when you're adding the gun specifically to the turret, there are parts that you do not want to glue if you want to be able to move the gun up and down. The moving of the gun up and down only allows for like maybe a 30 degree movement. So it's up to you whether you consider that movement important or not. But if you do, then you do want to be mindful of where it says not to glue certain pieces together. Also, there are what's supposed to be metal braces, I suppose you would call them, part of step N that attach the gun shield to the gun. There are four of them and by golly, they should have been attached to the gun shield before you attach the gun shield to the turret. I couldn't tell exactly where they fit after I'd put the gun shield on and they are only just long enough to fit. So I warn you now again, attach the metal braces, step N, to the gun shield pieces before you attach the gun shield pieces to the turret, which is step M. I think it'll make your life much easier. I made my life much easier by not attaching them at all, since I'd already glued the gun shield in place too well to remove it again. There may come a day before I paint the model that I might attach those 
teeny weeny pieces. But it will not be this day. And since the crew basically covers up any chance of you seeing whether you added them or not, I don't see it as that big of a deal to not have them in there. You may also want to do step Q, which attaches what looks like containers for the ammunition before you do step M, adding the gun shield as well, since there seems to be no reason not to add these containers earlier, which would definitely be simpler to do than it is to add them after the gun shield and gun itself are in the way. Oh, and the barrel of the gun does not have a hole. I drilled a small hole to start in the barrel and I'll increase its size to whatever the accurate size might be once I look at some photos before I paint it, but I was satisfied to at least get it started before moving on with the rest of the assembly. Oh, and there is going to be a basket that is holding ammunition at the back of this vehicle. At least according to the assembly guide, you get an extra shell case, cartridge, whatever you want to call it. Really, these are completely unattached ammunition pieces, so you could have them anywhere on the tank that you wanted, rather than just in the basket that uh, they were supposed to be put into. It's up to you. So the term martyr refers to the Martin, a weasel-like critter that is aptly named, at least in this modern era, because Martins are known in Germany for destroying vehicles. I only found this out during my research behind the name, but apparently they are a problem in Germany right now for going into cars and biting through the plastic tubing in them. So that doesn't sound too good. I don't know if that was the reason behind their name originally, which they were given allegedly by a suggestion from Hitler in 1943, because apparently the rise of the Martian population only came after World War II had ended in the 1950s, but it does seem well suited for the name of Tank Destroyer. I did mention already that you will need some tweezers for this model, and the reason is mostly these tow hooks, which are less than half a centimeter in length, and you don't get extras, so you'll want to be careful not to lose them. Tweezers are a must, I think, in this case. Well, the Murder 3 tank, as I mentioned, has the chassis of the Panzer 38T, a Czechoslovakian tank that the Germans repurposed for their own use. They did it a lot until it became obsolete because of the penetration of its smaller 37 millimeter gun when facing against better Soviet tanks like the T-34s, KV-1s, and I believe the Matildas as well in North Africa. So in 1942, the Panzer 38Ts were decommissioned and their chassis instead were used to make the Martyr 3s. Now the Martyr 1 and the Martyr 2 were also created from repurposed chassis uh, coming into production around the same time as the Martyr 3, but the Martyr 1 used for the most part the captured French chassis of the Lorraine light tank with the same uh, 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank guns used on the later Martyr 3 variants and the Martyr two tank destroyer used the chassis of the Panzer II instead of the Panzer 38T. Now look at this fine tank all complete, she just needs her crew now. After assembling the tank, the crew is a relief to put together. Actually, you may want to put the crew together first if you haven't ever assembled before, but I wouldn't suggest gluing the crew into place until you have them and your tank painted since they crowd around in so tightly in the back of their tank that getting a paintbrush between them and the tank would be unnecessary masochism. Oh, and the crew assembly is really where plastic glue shines. With a couple of passes with your applicator, you can make the join lines at their shoulders looking as thin as if it were simply the design of their coats. You could make them even disappear if you wanted to with more passes of the applicator with some glue, but a thin join line fits their uniform design just fine. And there we have it. We have the Martyr 3 ST KFC 139 tank destroyer ready to face off against those pesky Soviet T-34s and KV-1s. 
Well, after I paint them, of course. I don't have the crew glued in yet, so I don't mind too much their final placement. You do have a little flexibility on how their arms attach, how their heads attach, but for the most part, they are monoposed. So I'm sure you can mix and mingle this tank crew for other German open top tank crews if you'd like some variety. And Bolt Action also has little add-ons like sandbags, bed, rolls, and even infantry that you can sit on the tank to go for a ride as they make their way towards whatever battlefield this tank is headed towards. For those well-versed in the Martyr series, make sure to tell them what you think of this model in the comments below. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make certain to comment below if you had any questions whatsoever, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! All right, so here's the article where I heard about the Martins doing an incredible amount of damage to cars in Germany. Um, this is done in October 2016. I'm not certain how accurate it is, but according to David Tracy, anyway, Martins did $65 million in car damages each year. It's here somewhere. Um, it says, right, the takeaway is that between 2010 and 2014, these pesky Martins caused over 300 million euro in damage or about 33, about 330 million through 1.1 million insurance claims in the span of only five years years which is just so ironic that the little martins um, did more damage to cars i think i guess than the martyrs must have done throughout the war <laughs> but but it does show that that the tank destroyer was aptly named for these apparently invasive little creatures that completely wreck cars every year and in germany i don't know if this is still the case but it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something. <laughs> I'm just not on, you might want to read that article if you're interested. It's just really surprising to me. I guess I have heard of raccoons being the same sort of thing and maybe even rabbits and weasels, I suppose. But it's just, that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, bye.